Okay, so we got our magic set editor. Fantastic. We have me forgetting to pause the music. Um, I think I killed the audio for you guys, but I forgot to pause it. Whoops. Um, then chat. Great. There's the chat. And good, 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 good. Alrighty. Last one I need to put in because I didn't put it in. Uh, well, actually, could we just use the um, the window capture like last time? Might be able to. Let's see here. Uh, yeah, that can work. Uh, honestly, what I wanted to put in, and yeah, this is way more chill than two scoops is, uh, is a browser source. Great. And we want... A new source. We want card preview. There we go. So, see, looks like that right now. That's not what we want. I need to put in the... That guy. Perfect. Okay, now why am I putting this in? You may recognize this if you watch us on Two Scoops. That is the... Uh, the card previewer. So if I wanted to put in a card, like, say, uh, Thorn Mammoth here... Then he just shows up there, above my head. Yep. Uh, and actually, Thorn Mammoth is really nice. That, that is a really nice rare. Uh, but we're not going to use him right now. Bloop, he's gone. All right. So a couple of things that I've been messing with here. Uh, one is I've been looking at our archetypes. And they're fine. They're fine archetypes. Nobody's denying that these are fine archetypes. Oh. I made my magic set editor window a smidge too big. So with that in mind, I can actually move this over and make it a bit wider. Perfecto. Okay. Uh, archetypes. A couple of things I noticed about the archetypes when I was messing with them. Um, one is that the title wasn't popping up as archetypes. It is now. Fixed that. Uh, I was looking at the archetypes, and I came to realize that there were a couple of things we could do to kind of mess with it that might be a bit more fun, um, like making green-blue into big creatures might be more fun. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the rest of these. Also, uh, control for blue-white... We're, we're going to put a flyer sub theme, because there are two cards that I just love to pieces, that I would love to see a common. Um, so, that's what we're going to pull in, are those two fellas. So, a moment, as I go to the advanced search on uh, Scryfall, good old Scryfall, uh, because there are a couple of cards I would like us to review. Actually, first things first. Uh, looking at all of our creature types. Angels. I've saved a spot for a rare angel because we should have a rare angel. Uh, in fact, I would say sphinxes. Sphinxes, angels, demons, dragons, and hydras, and golems deserve to be at each rarity. So, we need a common sphinx of some kind. It's just how it is. We need a common sphinx. Hello, this is the common sphinx. Um, so I'm just going to take this four drop here. We're going to say he's a sphinx for now, and we're just going to leave it there for the moment. Uh, we have a common angel. Uh, we need an uncommon sphinx. And an uncommon sphinx would be great. Uh, now, honestly, out, the reason we're doing this is... There are a couple creature types that are super important, as you saw in our little creature types list there. Um, included in those are what we call the Iconics and the uh, 
exemplars, I think it is. I don't know. Uh, the thing is that you need big sphinxes for blue, because blue is referred to by the sphinxes. Uh, the one exception is demons. Demons, we can kind of, like, swap out horror for them, so it's, like, horror or demon. Uh, but, like, dragons, if you don't have a dragon at common, something is wrong. Right now, we only have a rare dragon. Um, and knowing who my wife is, she would be very mad if I did not have more dragons. That's how she is. So, we're going to put in some more dragons. Uh, the other thing is, though, uh, I was looking at the uncommon slots, and I came to realize something. That there is a creature I really want to put in at uncommon who's not a dragon. Uh... And that is the Charging Monstrosaur. Uh, I love Charging Monstrosaur. It's a great critter. I know we haven't really done a lot of uh, uncommons yet, but this one can also count as our official This is the Ixalon card. Uh, because it just it feels like Ixalon. Because as much as we want to say, oh, we have a vampire spell. Vampires aren't what we think of with Ixalan. We think of the dinosaurs and the pirates. Merfolk and vampires, I don't think anyone can disagree with this, are kind of like side benefits. That's, that's what they are. That's what they have been for a long time. Uh, Charging Monster Sword, I feel, is just about the same power level as Sarah Angel. Uh, and I feel it fits that, but that uh, niche very, very well. Uh, so let me double check that I put in three dragons. No, I did not. I did not put in my uncommon dragon. So I wasn't thinking. All right, let's go by names, because all the uncommons that aren't filled in yet should be next to each other. And I see a 5R, and that is a very good place to put a dragon. Uh, dragons should be big. They should be beefy. These should always be big creatures. Uh, green's another one where we can kind of do an alternative thing with it. Oh, and also, since uh, you guys don't know what Charging Monsters are supposed to look like, allow me to show you. He is supposed to look... Uh, excuse me. Charging Monsters Sword? There you are. It's supposed to look like this. It's a very nice card. Nobody hates the Charging Monster Sword. It's fantastic. There, our card previews will replace the card. Um, he's great. It's a great card. Look at him. He's 5-5 five, five for 5. Trample in haste. What more do you want out of an uncommon red card? Nothing. That's what. It's amazing. Uh, yeah, so Hydras are a little bit trickier. Uh, but green's also the end of our list. So for now, we're going to put in a Hydra at each rarity. Uh, we have one in the slot already for rare. Let's put in one at Coman. Uh, and a common Hydra is going to feel very different from a rare Hydra. Just by its nature. Uh, same with an uncommon Hydra. Uh, Beast can kind of fill in for Hydra in a set, but I feel Hydra makes more sense. Uh, it fits more with what they're trying to do with magic. Okay. So, uh, what we need, though, we need our com common cards. And we are going to put some focus on our common blues. So we have a Vidalcan. We're good there. We have a space saved for a Sphinx. Now, this is another place where we're kind of torn up. Um, so one, we could make a new Sphinx. That's always an option when we're making a custom set, is making a new card. With a core set, we want about 60% of the cards to be old cards. But we can make new cards as long as they feel like an easy-to-understand card. That's, that's the rule. Uh, but we're going to want to look at some sphinxes so i'm going to pull up some sphinxes here so i'm going to turn on our card previewer and the first thing that you're going to notice when i load in sphinxes is that there are only three common sphinxes uh which is a little bit of a shame because i feel since angels always get that much coverage so to speak uh that so should the other iconic creature types uh, dragons normally get that much coverage, too. But we have three Sphinxes. 
and I'm going to show you the problems with all three of them. Like, one's good. One's good. All right. So first we have Witness of Tomorrows. Uh, there's only one issue I have with Witness of Tomorrow. So let's look at his stuff. He's four and a blue for a 3-4 enchantment creature's face. Uh, he has flying, and he has three and a blue to scry one. Everything about this card is fine, except for one thing. He is an enchantment creature. We don't want enchantment creature. Enchantment creatures are very much just Theros' thing. Uh, as much as I think they make as much sense as artifact creatures or land creatures, artifact creatures kind of got grandfathered in. Because uh, they've been there since uh, Antiquities, I want to say. No, they, I think they've been there since Alpha. I think the first one is out in Alpha, so the first set had an artifact creature. Uh, enchantment creatures did not show up, and land creatures did not show up until Future Sight. Uh, so while we could see them converting into that, land creatures have kind of become like a thing that I keep thinking should be in Zendikar, and they never are. And enchantment creatures are very much just Theros. That is Theros' identity. They deserve to be in Theros. They are always from Theros. And while that is a good way to indicate something's from Theros, I don't think that works in a core set. Um, so now, our second one here is Dwar Isle Avenger. Now, this one's from Zendikar. Uh, it's four and a blue for a 3-3 three, three with flying, with Surge, two and a blue. Surge is an alternative to Kicker, so it's an inverted Kicker. Instead of pay more to make this do more, it's do more to make this cost less. Uh, really good in team battles, if you're in Two-Headed Giant. This actually belongs in my Battle Bondier 2 cube list. Or Battle Bond 2 Battle Bondier, uh, as well as Fight Club, which is its budget version. Uh, but that surge costs right up there. That's that's there. There. We don't want that surge. It needs to go away. That leaves us with Cloud Reader Sphinx. I have no problem with Cloud Reader Sphinx. But it's a shame that as far as our common, easily grokkable Sphinxes go that this is the only one. Because uh, what do we need to know about it? It's five mana for a 3-4. That's fine. It's a Sphinx. It, it's got a lion's body and birdie wings and a lady head. That's what Sphinxes need. And when it enters the battle, you scry two. So you look at the top two cards of your library, you go, hmm, yes. And you get to pick if you want them both on the top in any order, both on the bottom in any order, or split them, or whatever. You get to choose where they go. If it's a, this is later Bojack's problem, or this is my problem now. Uh, I like Cloud Reader Sphinx. Cloud Reader Sphinx is a wee bit weak, and I'm going to show you why. So five mana for a three, four. Now, if we go up into the uncommon Sphinxes, and there are more uncommon Sphinxes, but not a lot. We have a couple more options here. Uh, now, one is this here, Bell Tower Sphinx. And Bell Tower Sphinx? Uh-oh. There we go. It glitched out for a second. Uh, so it's a 2-5 five for 5, flying it when a source deals damage to it. That source's controller puts that many cards from the top of his or her library into his or her graveyard. This is a great Uncommon Sphinx. And in th fact, I kind of want this for our Uncommon Sphinx. I love this one. But this isn't going to work for our Common Sphinx. Uh, we have City Watch Sphinx. But you'll notice he has Surveil. We don't want Surveil. That's a new mechanic. We have Ominous Sphinx. Who does care about cycling. Um, and I like that. So he's also a very good candidate for our uh, Uncommon Sphinx. We have Rescuer Sphinx. Who's interesting, but I don't think she fits here. And then we have Horizon Scholar. Horizon Scholar is one mana more than uh, Cloud Reader Sphinx for one power more. And that's it. It is a six mana four four with flying. So, I want us to check something. We're going to go over to the advanced search. And we are going to check for cards that are six CMC. Their power is equal to or greater than four. Their toughness 
equal to or greater than four. They are blue. And they can fly. All right, so I want to see if we have any blue flyers that are CMC6, four fours with flying at common. That is what we are judging this by. There is one. That one is River Wheel Aerialists, which was originally an uncommon, but it was dropped down for Iconic Masters and Mystery Booster. So I guess Mystery Booster, everything was kind of the same rarity anyway, but River Wheel Aerialists is actually a little stronger. It's a 4 or 5 with Prowess. So I'm going to use River Wheel Aerialists as an argument for why Horizon Scholar here, who is almost the same, but he's trading Prowess for Scry 2, and he's one toughness lower. I think this guy could be common. And I think putting him at common is not going to ruin anything. So we're going to try it. Try Horizon Scholar. Which I spelt wrong. Because I'm not a good speller. Uh, you know, I do not like our previews there. Sam, I am. Let's put him here. Fantastic. Now, the sad part is I actually can't see the previews on my end. Uh, they are separate windows for you guys. And boop. Enters the battlefield. Scry 2. Now, this puts this set at a roughly a Dominaria power level. At least because of this guy. I'm perfectly fine with that. Are you perfectly fine with that? Because I'm perfectly fine with that. Um, no flavor text. Doesn't need it. It's just a simple Sphinx. He's a Sphinxy boy. Great. Uh, so there's our Sphinx for common. Uh, just so you remember, our common angel was a winged shepherd, who was a cycling angel. Uh, and in fact, let me check here. Cycling. Yes, yeah, so he became part of a cycle with River Stripe Blinder. Uh, this guy who we'll have to design. This guy who we'll have to design. And this guy who we'll have to design, which we should put Cycler on his name as well. Um, and I think that's fine. Uh, meanwhile, Croson Tusker became part of a cycle with all new creatures including a zombie, which we haven't named yet. Uh, but I should put Cycle Zombo on him. Come on, there we go. Cycle Payoff. Uh, Rest Over Golem is actually part of the Cycler cycle. Uh, I also feel we should make one more cycle. Um, and this one would be, this one's actually going to add to our list, so, eh, but here we go. Uh, we are going to add a common cycle of cycle payoff cards. Um, so, their name's just going to be Cycle Matters for now, uh, and I think some of the new Ikoria cards can actually matter here. Because uh, there is a red card coming out in Ikoria and a white card coming out in Ikoria that I feel would fit very well for common Cycle Matters uh, cards. And so we might put them into those spots, but we'll see. Uh, anyway, so we have our common Sphinx. We should go back a few steps to our uncommon Sphinx. Uh, as much as I like the Bell Tower Sphinx, I think Ominous Sphinx uh, is going to fit better for what we're doing now, uh, since we're making cycling matter again. And cycling is fun. Cycling is good. Cycling is a good mechanic, and I think it deserves to stay. So even though this is supposed to be five and a blue, it actually drops down to four and a blue blue. Uh, and just so you guys can see what it is I'm adding. Here, boop. It's this guy. 
Ominous Sphinx, he is from Amonkhet. Uh, so that's kind of neat. He's a neat dude. And actually, I'm going to move this window so I can see it better. Fantastic. So Ominous Sphinx. Now, the other thing I will use this program for is I will use it to make cubes, which is silly. Uh, I'll normally use cube, uh, cube Cobra now, but for a long time I used this for making cubes, especially in places where I don't have uh, internet, because this program doesn't need the internet. Uh, though, the card recognizer needs the internet. Whoop. And the uh, Scryfall obviously needs the internet. So hey, we got Ominous Sphinx. Ominous Sphinx is neat. Um, so now we got our Rare Sphinx. And our Rare Sphinx is going to be the hardest one to, to pick out. Uh, because there's been a lot of Rare Sphinxes. Now, the easy part is we can kick out Sphinxes that don't work here. So like Arbiter of the Ideal uh, doesn't work here because they use Inspired. We don't want to use Inspired. Uh, Argent Sphinx doesn't work here because Metalcraft. Um, and honestly, I think that there should... Or, like, okay. Curator of Mysteries is fine, but we just took another Cycle Matters Sphinx, and I want them to think that all Sphinxes are Cyclers. Uh, I will admit, Goliath Sphinx is very, very tempting. It doesn't help at all with the mill strategy or with the tempo strategy. But if we were to go for the big uh, big mana cost matters for blue-green, Goliath Sphinx fits very, very well because it's a 7 mana spell for an 8-7 with flying. That's a great way to swing in. Uh, Sarah Sphinx sounds nice, but we're going to avoid her as much as we like her. Uh, now... Prognostic Sphinx is interesting. Prognostic Sphinx gets hexproof when you discard a card, but you have to tap it. Um, and then whenever it attacks, you get Scry 3. But the tapping it doesn't matter if it's already tapped, so it's slightly better than Regenerate. Um, da -da 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 -da. Now, what's another good one? There is Sharding Sphinx. But that would matter if we had more artifact creatures, but we might have a lot of artifact creatures. I think we're going to have to hold off on getting our rare Sphinx in for now. Uh, though I will admit, I am also very, very fond of Sphinx of Magosi. Because uh, flying, two and a blue, draw a card, then put a plus one, plus one counter on it. It's very nice. Uh, it, it's very Johnny-ish. It's very simple. Um... But it's simple in a way like Shib and Dragon is. So I'm, I'm personally fond of it. Uh, let's look at our Demons. Or Horrors. Uh, actually, no. Let's look at Dragons. And we want it in red. And we want Common Dragons. Are there some Common Dragons we can use other than Dragon Egg? Well, I will tell you, there is Furnace Whelp. And there is Lightning Striker. And there is Spark Tongue Dragon. There's a couple of good ones here. Um, hmm. They want to avoid too much shuffling in the middle of the game, and I can understand that. Dragon Hatchling, I'm a little fond of. But, I don't know, I think a bigger mana cost is a good way to go here. Uh, Furnace Whelp is fun for that. And Furnace Whelp... Uh, I don't know. There's a lot of good options there. A lot of good options there. Like, I, I do like this little baby dragon. Uh, alternatively, we'll just make a new dragon. Uh, possibly using Furnace Whelp as a springboard? Um, or something like Spark Tongue Dragon as a springboard. Though... You'll notice that Spark Tongue Dragon's ability is just Kicker without it being called Kicker. Uh, now, if we were to look at our uncommon dragons, just to fill in the uncommon slot, we already have our rare done. Our rare is Shivan Dragon. That's not changing. Uh, so many options. Uh, 
Well, Furnace Wolf is surprisingly also an uncommon, but with a different art, and I don't like it. I'm not a fan. Uh, da, 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 da. Looking at all of these guys. There are so many guys. Now, hold up. There is Shockmaw Dragon. Shockmaw Dragon is very, very neat. So even though it's just a 4-4 with flying, for the most part, whenever it deals damage, it deals one damage to each creature that player control, or, uh, yeah, each creature that player controls. That's very fun. Uh, there's also Volcanic Dragon, which is a classic. Um, that one was just an M20. And I want to say it was also an M19. Yeah, it was. It was an M19. Um, same art, even. I will admit, the old arts are really nice. It is a portal card, and I am fond of portal cards. Uh, if you want to look at the old one, it looks like this. It's a very old card. Uh, so I do think Volcanic Dragon might be the best uncommon dragon we could use here. He was a rare back in Portal. That was before they even colored the symbols. I, I, I can see why they picked Volcanic Dragon. I'm personally fond of Volcanic Dragon. Let's use Volcanic Dragon. So, uh, he is not a 5 and a red. He is a 4 and a red red. Which is very similar. He is a 4-4. Four, four. The fact that our uncommon is a 4-4 four, four and our common and our rare is a 5-5 five, five makes me think that our common should be a 3-3. Three, three. Yes. Um, then there should be some nice flavor text we can steal here. That's no ordinary eruption. Is fine. Uh, though I do like the Quartz Set 2019, 2020 flavor text of sometimes an eruption in Shiv produces something more dangerous than a mere river of molten rock. Namely, it makes a volcanic dragon. So this is a cousin to the Shivan dragon. Uh, which is fun. I think it's very fun. Um, there was also at one point... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's this guy. The Starter 1999 art. Which is a couple of dragons, like, chilling out in the lava. Which is also fun. I'm also fond of that one. Uh, so... Mm, okay, so I think we got dragons figured out. Hydras. Woof. Okay, hydras are gonna be hard. Let's go back. We want type Hydra. Color green. Rarity common. There is one. It is multi-headed. That's not going to help us. Now, if we get rid of the color requirement, we are still stuck with multi-headed. Which is fine, except... It's an augment card, and it's silver border. So that's not going to help us at all. Now, at Uncommon, we have three Hydras we can use. Um, problem is... <sighs> they are perhaps a little too focused, I guess is the way to put it. Um, hmm. I think Hero's Bane is a neat design, but we won't necessarily be able to use it. Um, and then what have we got in Rare? Rare is always where the Hydras hang out. Uh, Feral Hydra has been downshifted to Uncommon before. Uh, Gargos was M20's Hydra. He's fine. Uh, Hero's Bane got downshifted to, com uh, to Uncommon. Genesis Hydra is a lot of fun. I'm not going to deny that one. Um, I'm avoiding anything with Monstrous. I'm avoiding anything with Heroic. Any other mechanics can go away. Uh, hmm. The thing is, is that Hydras are typically based around plus one, plus one counters. And that I can see being a problem. So, what if we made an entirely new critter? We're going to kill the card preview for a second. Boop, there we go. 
And we're going to go over here. I'm going to find our hydras. I think our common hydra is going to be called Hydra Hatchling. All right, it's a very simple card. Hydra Hatchling. Hatchling. And I think Hydra Hatchling should be one in a green green for a 2-2. Two, two. So a whole new critter here. Hydra Hatchling. And let's have it... Hmm. Should we deal damage to it? I don't think so. I think that's mean. We don't want to deal damage to the baby. Hmm. Aha. But let's use a variation on Rootwalla. So what is Rootwalla? Rootwalla, or in fact all of the Wallas. Let's pull up the Wallas here. The Wallas are these fellas. So this is Basking Rootwalla. He had ability that gave him plus two, plus two. Frilled Sandwalla had an ability that gives him plus two, plus two. Frostwalla had an ability that gave him plus two, plus two. So many Wallas. And, um... The Wallas are based off of a real lizard. Uh, and I'm trying to remember what that wizard... Uh, not wizard. Lizard is um it's from australia and it's like a lizard that inflates like a balloon um here we go we want it's called like a leaf walla or something like that? No. Walla lizard. A chuck walla. Here we go. So I'm going to see if this takes the re. Oh, it's actually from America, not Australia. It's just you hear a weird lizard and you assume it's Australia, I guess. Here we go. Doop. It is a big lizard. He's fine. And I guess what they can do is they inflate a little bit when they're, like, trying to scare things off. Uh, which is kind of neat. So we're going to use that idea here with this Sandwalla, who is a fine creature, uh, to make something similar. Where, let's do one and a green. Hydra Hatchling. Put a plus one, plus one counter on Hydra Hatchling. There we go. This ability only once per turn. Uh, actually, with that in mind, let's actually drop him down to just green green um yeah that's a fine little hydra he still gets to play with plus one plus one counters like the biggin uh compared to our big hydra who we're just gonna call big hydra and our big hydra should be something closer to um big hydra enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. Easy enough. Um, now we need something that makes it improve, uh, increase the number of counters. The Hydra Hatchling, you pay for it. The big Hydra. Huh. Let's see here. What's a good method for the big hydra? Part of me thinks eating things from a swamp, uh, from the graveyard, but maybe not. Um, maybe.
maybe pitching things into the graveyard? Discarding a card? Discarding a card sounds pretty good. Uh, and a lot of the Hydras have been based on power. Let's base this one on toughness. Yeah. Yeah, all right. So, um, okay. Let's do two and a green and discard a card. Or we can make it have cycling matters. When you discard or cycle a card, you may pay two and a green. If you do, put a number of plus one plus one counters onto Big Hydra to the discarded cards converted mana cost so actually we're just going to make it when you discard a card and then have it put down here cycling counts as discarding great uh, and that means of course that he enters as a zero zero um, that's the downside of most big hydras. They're zero zeros. Uh, you can't target them with a lot of things that care about uh, power and toughness. Uh, and if you do, they just die upon entering the battlefield. Uh, mm. Although, that does work for a good X cost card. That almost makes me wonder... If we should make it an X cost, it probably should be an X cost. An X cost is fine. Um, okay. And then we have our co our, our uh, uncommon Hydra. And an uncommon Hydra, I feel, should also be a 0-0 zero, zero who gets counters. Um, but this one, I feel, should be Exert. Because we're using Exert in this co uh, core set. Oh the other thing that we didn't put on Big Hydra. Trample. Gotta have tramplers. Um, we'll also have... Oh, wait, no, no. Put that one back. There we go. If Hydra Hatchling's power is, let's say, 7... Or greater. It has tra ah, actually, no. It's a hatchling. It can't trample. Even if it gets a bunch of heads. It's too tiny. This one should have conditional trample. Uh, so let's make it... Oh, you know what? Let's make this one uh, Striving Hydra. I think that's a good name for it. Striving Hydra. There we go. And let's make it... Let's make it a bit more middle ground. Or no, no, no. Maybe? Maybe. Uh, let's make it... Three in a green green. There we go. It's going to start as a little 3-3 three, three Hydra. B better than his little brother. Here. Uh, when... Striving Hydra... Attacks. May exert it to put a number of plus one plus one counters on it equal to its toughness. If striving Hydra. As let's make it six. Six or more plus one plus one counters on it. It has trample. 
There we go. And we're actually going to trim this one up a little bit because he's a little... Uh, he's running over a little bit. There we go. Kind of likes driving Hydra, honestly. That's a neat little custom design. Okay. So, hey, Hydras are done. Uh, so let's go back to our checklist. So we got our Hydras done. Uh, we have beasts. We have elves. Do we have any goblins? Maybe we forgot a goblin. We forgot to put in a goblin. Also, did we put in zombies? We have two zombies. Put in vampires? We have a vampire. We have merfolk. We have a merfolk. We have a vidalcan. We have a serpent. We need a goblin. All right. So, we're going to put in a gobbo. We need a common goblin. Now, that is going to be easy to get. Uh, there are a lot of existing common goblins that will definitely fit what we're doing. And I am not afraid of that at all. Uh, so, we want a goblin. We want it to be red. We want it to be common. We're going to search. I'm going to scratch my head. Uh, hmm. Now, the other thing is we want to make sure we have cards that fit our archetypes. And I know we said black-red was going to be sacrifice. Now, we have 163 common goblins to look at here. Oof, that's a lot. That is a lot. Uh, but I see one that could easily be one of our Kamigawa cards. Um... I see a couple of good ones, honestly. So, let's see what we can do here. We have... Uh, do, 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 do. We have one I love so much. He's actually a little strong, but... We've already agreed that this is a little bit of a strong format. Um, so that's fine. So I got three goblins, or two goblins so far. I want to put in a third. I'm trying to find a good third one. It's a little bit higher up. That's not going to completely mess everything up. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see what we have. We need somebody common. We need somebody who feels like a red card. Because there's a lot of older red cards that don't. Um... And I think I got three. Let me see if I can find a fourth one who fits exactly what I want. We had Goblin Rough Rider before. We got rid of him. I think a vanilla goblin is still what we want uh, in here somewhere. I think a vanilla goblin is helpful for what we're doing. Uh, and I think a bear is where to put a vanilla goblin. Uh, that might just be me, but I think a bear makes a lot of sense as a vanilla goblin. Uh, and by a bear, I mean, of course, a 2-2 two, two for 2. So 2 power, 2 toughness, 2 mana. Across the board, 2. Uh, that is a... We call that a bear because the first card to do that was grizzly bears. That's how uh, magic archetypes get named. Uh, oh, and you know what? There, uh, There's a couple good options there. Um, I see swab goblin... And who else? Swab Goblin's fun because he is definitely, definitely a uh, Ixalan Goblin. There's no getting around that that is an Ixalan Goblin. Uh, but maybe we don't want an Ixalan Goblin. So I'm trying. I know there was another one who was a Goblin Bear, just a pure bear. Here he is. Nope. That one is not a bear. He's also a rare, which is dumb. Nobody wants that card at rare. Ever. Nobody wants Goblin Hero. I love Goblin Hero, but he, he shouldn't be a rare. He shouldn't be. And there's no getting around that. Uh, there's Goblin Bully, who's a piker. It's a little weaker than I want. There he is. Goblin Assailant. All right. So we got some goblins. So first one that's up on our chopping block. Oh, gobos. Uh, we have our two bears. We have our goblin assailant, who is a warrior, which is fine. Uh, and we have swab goblin, who is 100% just from Ixalan. Also fine, 
but maybe a little bit too on the nose, considering also in Ixalan, we have Fanatical Firebrand, who I'm very fond of. Uh, but Fanatical Firebrand might be a little bit too strong here. Then again, on the other hand, he's really neat, and he's a monkey goblin. So, eh, I don't know. I know, I'm torn on that one. I will say, Goblin Locksmith's a lot of fun, too. As is... Uh, go back. Aki Blizzard Herder. Um, when it dies, each player sacrifices a land. That is a wonderful payoff for a sacrifice deck. Uh, that said, it's a little mean. So maybe not him. Uh, in a similar vein, we could do Goblin Arsonist. I am fond of Goblin Arsonist. In fact, Goblin Arsonist may be better than Fanatical Firebrand in this one instance. Once in the world, this is the one to go with. Goblin Arsonist. So let's put him in. We need him in our one drop creature slot. Goblin Arsonist. It's loading. There we go. He is, of course, a goblin. And he is also a shaman. As most goblins should be. Wait, maybe not. There we go, and this feels very much like that whole uh, risk-reward that Black Red likes to play in. So there we go, we have Goblin Arsonist, and I think that's a fantastic choice for a common goblin. Uh, now we're stuck with, between Swab Goblin and Goblin Assailant. In this case, I feel Swab Goblin is the way to go since we said no to the Firebrand. And then we can treat Swab Goblin as one of our Ixalan show-off cards. And this tells people, hey, pirates are a thing here. Look at how cool he is. So another thing I had open in another window, uh, this window, is our planar representation, our, our planar representatives. So in Estrad, we have Black Cat and Vampire Noble, uh, Ravnica, we have Crosstown Courier, uh, Zendikar, we have uh, Frenzied Cub, Ixalan, we have Frenzied, or sorry, if Zendikar, we have Felidar Cub, Ixalan, we have Frenzied Raptor, and now Goblin Swap, or Swap Goblin. Lorwyn, we have Gold Meadow Harrier, Almonkett, we have Gustwalker, uh, Eldraine, we have Prophet of the Peak, uh, Dominaria, we have Shivan Dragon and Volcanic Dragon, uh, Meriden, we have Skyhunter Patrol. Uh, we need to find common representations from the other planes, uh, with the exception of Ragatha and Vryn, because Vryn's only been in a couple of cards, and same with Ragatha. Uh, we can be a little bit more loosey-goosey with them, and we can make new cards for them. Uh, but we do want to find some good entries for those. Uh, and also, we have an elf already, which is kind of why I'm like, not focusing on greens right now because we went straight to Lana War Elves. So might as well. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to pull up the other planes. We're going to search by the other planes that have no cards from those sets yet. Uh, and so the way this is going to go, we're going to go advanced search on Scryfall. And we are going to search for common cards from those sets. And the first one that I would like to do is it called International Series? It might be, no? Global Series. Okay, we're going to do uh, the Plane of Mountain and Seas. That one might be the easiest because there's so few cards there and it was a beginner-friendly set anyway. Um, so we get to do some fun things there. Uh... The thing is, is that there's not a lot of great cards in that at all. Uh, so looking through, like, there is Breath of Fire, but why would we use Breath of Fire? 
it's worse than shock or lightning strike. Nobody wants a worse shock. Nobody. Nobody wants that. Uh, it's it's not good. So almost any card we put in here is going to be a leftover. Uh, giant spider, I guess, could be our representative. Uh, but that's not super exciting. Uh, now, there is one that is very tempting to me. Because I love Pegasus Courser. I love Pegasus Courser and Loyal Pegasus so much. And they have an option that fits that same vibe. And it's Heavenly Kirin. And I think Heavenly Kirin is going to be our winner here. Uh, because he's a card I essentially already wanted in the set. Um, even though he's a Kirin instead of a Pegasus, we will still find another place to put a Pegasus uh, if we can. But he's very neat. And so Heavenly Kirin uh, has become our representative of the Plain of Mountain and Seas. Uh, which is a fine place to put it. Of course, uh, as I finish these, uh, w once we finish this set and we get it to the point where we want to start messing with it, uh, I will be uploading it to Plane Sculptors so that you can all play it on Cockatrice or Tabletop Simulator because that's just a heck of a lot of fun already. So, you know what we could probably do is we can probably knock out uh, the Alara block all in one go because Alara we're going to need to pull out five cards from. I know that's a lot, but that's because Alara is five planes in one. Which they used to be five planes called the Shards. They got shoved together. It's what happens. Uh, things happen. So we're going to go to Alara block, and we're going to look for common Alara cards that make sense for each uh, shard that don't have weird mechanics um, and aren't multicolors. And this might be difficult. Well, hey. We have one. We have one that might very much work for Bant. And that's Angel Song. Prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn. Cycling 2. It's a white fog. And I always thought white should have fogs anyway. Uh, the other one we could do is Asha's Favor. Which is very much a Bant card. Um, 2 and a white for an enchantment aura. Uh, enchanted creature has flying, first strike, and vigilance. That's perfectly acceptable. Um, and Bane Wasp Affliction makes sense for Grixis. Uh, so let, let, let me open up a couple of these. And of course, put them up onto the window so you can see them. Uh, so first off, we have Ash's Favor, which is very, very neat. Ooh, hey, Skippy. Nice to see you here. Uh, Mardu Mutate might be your new deck type. So many aristocrats. It isn't it? There's so many aristocrats, though a lot of the aristocrats are in humans who can't mutate. Uh, yeah, so we're looking for our uh, Bant, Esper, Grixis, Naya, and Jund uh, cards. I think going off of their center component is the way to go here. Uh, oh, you're right. Nightmares also have it. Okay, so I think we found a good one for Bant here in Ash's favor. Uh, Bane Wasp Affliction, I think, works well for Grixis. I want a blue artifact for... Uh, what do you call it? For uh, Espers. Oh, Nightmares Mutate Without Sacking. Midnight Clock. I believe Midnight Clock was not a common, was it? Was it? Well, wait, wait, we need one from Esper. It needs to be a card that was in Esper. Uh, though, you know, it was an Esper, is Courier's Capsule, and that feels pretty good, um, but maybe not. That one's a maybe. That one is very much a maybe. Uh, but I'm not going to say no to it yet. Uh, we also need a good red one. For Jund, I think Dragon Fodder fits that bill. So Dragon Fodder is a good one there. We need a good one for Naya. One that feels very Naya. 
Oh, you know who also is very good for um, for Esper though is Ethereum Sculptor. In fact, I think. Oop, I think I clicked the wrong button. I did. Haha. Uh, I think Ethereum Sculptor beats out uh, Courier's Capsule for me. Uh, ooh, so then we need a green one still. Ooh, Gift of the Gargantuan. Gift of the Gargantuan might be the way to go for Naya. Naya, Naya could have fun with that one. God Toucher sounds inappropriate, so we're going to avoid that one. Mm, oh, there is Infectious Horror as well. Infectious Horror might be better for uh, Grixis than Bane Wasp Affliction. It's a little easier to understand. Yeah. Hmm. Silas Wren. Maybe? Uh, let me pull up Silas Wren because I do not remember him. Silas Wren, Seeker Adept. He is... He has Partner. And I don't want to incorporate partner into this set, but maybe in the future. Huh. Now, Mastodon is also a fun one for Naya, though. And I think Mastodon actually would be the best one compared to Gift of the Gargantuan. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of feeling that one there. Oh, we're getting new partners in 2020 Commander decks. Fantastic. I was not aware of that. That would be a lot of fun. It would be a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay. Um Ooh. Hmm. Now spell snip, I don't want to use as one of our ones here, but I do like it. I think spell snip could actually really do the job there. Uh of being a good counter spell. I also forgot Unsummon. You kind of need Unsummon. Yeah, okay. So our Alara representatives. Ooh. Ooh, you're a good throwaway card, but maybe not. Mm, I'll put you in a maybe. All right. Uh, so we want to go back a few steps. There we go. We're going to put in the guys we found here to be our representatives of the Alara cards. Uh, so first we have Asha's Favor, uh, which let's pull that up so you all can see it. Asha's Favor. Very nice little card. Uh, it's an enchantment aura. She already had a two and a one enchantment aura in common. So enchant creature. Just a little creature. Uh, enchant creature. Enchanted... Creature has flying, first strike, and vigilance. I think this just became card number one in the set, uh, just due to its name. It might be number two. No, it's number one. There it is. Neat. Uh, we will come back to you, Asha's Favor. You are from Conflux, which I do love that set. Uh, next up, we have Dragon Fodder. And Dragon Fodder is one of those cards just makes you happy to see in a draft. Uh, did we have a token strategy? I don't think. Oh no, we have a stacking strategy, though, in red. So, I mean, that's right there. Two 1 1 red goblin creatures. What are you going to say? Say no to that. It's great. Uh, Ethereum Sculptor. 
who I, I like him. I like him. Uh, he has a little bit of cost reduction. Which, I mean, everyone could use some cost reduction in their lives. Everything costs too dang much. And I like that he's building, like, this big old dude. And he gives us another Vidalkin and an Artificer, which are two things that I think red need, or not red, blue needs to show off what blue can do. And also that he's a blue artifact uh, creature. Got into play about a thousand more magic since the pandemic, and I have mixed feelings about that. That's where I'm at. Like, the... The world's gone to shit, but here I am streaming more and making more magic sets and playing more games. Uh, and yet, like, I'm kind of happy about that. I, I think we're just both trying to make the best of a bad situation. Uh, hey, over in green, we have Mastodon. I like you, Mastodon. You're fun. Uh, where'd you go? There you are. So we need a big critter slot. And I have another big critter slot, and it's this right size. And it's an elephant, which will make my uh, mother-in-law happy if she ever plays magic. It's also a plant, which is also nice. Wait, does it count as a plant elephant? Yeah, it's a plant elephant, not an elephant plant. And, like, the Mastodon kind of sums up my feelings on how magic creature design should be. It should make you excited that there's fancier things out there that you weren't ready for. I, like, I, I feel that's very important with magic design. That who could have expected a plant elephant? I didn't know this card existed before this search right now. He's that cool. I love you, Ma uh, Mastodon. I also have a lot more time to spend on these spoilers and actually figure out my opinions, and they're all hyped for anything that isn't humans. The humans look hyped too, though. The humans have a great aristocrat strategy going with them. Um, yes, okay, last one is in black, and it is Infectious Horror, and it needs to be here. Uh, Infectious Horror is great. And he's been in, uh, sets recently, or core sets recently, even. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, 19. Hey, he was in Conspiracy. He's just a very effective critter. And that Pete Venters art is so wonderful. Just look at how wonderful it is. Let's see here. Uh, I play Vampire Aristocrat, so I can't do anything with the new Aristocrat tools without building a whole new deck. And who knows, I might. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the same place. I'm... Currently looking at a Vampire Mardu Mutate Aristocrats. That does sound fun. I won't deny that. Um, I have an old cycling deck I never got to do from Amonkhet. And now there's, like, new cycling. I kind of want to do, like, cycling in Frontier. Uh, okay, so I think Spell Snip is actually a really fun counter spell. So we're going to put in Spell Snip. Let's go and snip a snip on the spell. Boop, boop. And I mean, yeah, it just looks neat. It's a neat spell. And then we have Unsummon, which is a classic spell. Like every corset needs Unsummon, it, or at least something like it. Dispersal also works. There we go. It's got to recalculate everything, but there we are. Um, okay. Now we got this yoked plow beast, which we don't need to put in the set. He doesn't need to be in the set. 
fine. I like them. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an extra slot. In what? Well, no, that's that's going to screw us over, isn't it? Because we already had an extra white card somehow. Uh, oh, you know how we can find out? Let's make it color than rarity. There's an extra white rare. But how is there an extra white rare? There should be. One, two, three, four, five. I doubled up on fives. There's a five sorcery and a five instant. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of that six. Make that the six. There we go. Okay, so we fixed our color balance issue somehow. 12, 11, 11, 11, 12. So let's do that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. I doubled up on seven, too. That'll teach me to try to count. Okay. Now. Let's go back up to the common white cards. Um... Let's sort it by color. And search only for the word common. Color. There we go. Two white and a two white. Do I have another four white? I don't. A couple more two whites. Um, hmm. I guess I can get rid of this guy for him. So, let's put in that yoked plow beast, because I like it. It's a dumb card. But sometimes you just need a mana sink at the end of the day. Uh, and I'll probably get rid of this. In all honesty, I will probably get rid of this beast. Cycling. There we go. save. There we go. Let's see here. Uh, they're very good aristocrats, but they're humans only. That's true. Tour de France is always a good deck type. Croissant and Tusker just became a super relevant again. Yeah, cycling's fun. Like, it's not the most fun in the world, but it's a fine type. So, let's go back to our list. So, for Bant, we put in Ash's Favor. Works better if I'm typing it. And for Esper, we put in a Therium Sculpture. And for Grixis, we put in Infectious Horror. And Jund got Dragon Fodder, which feels like an iconic Jund card to me. And Naya, we got Mostodon. Very fun. All right, so let's uh, sort these in. There we go. Fiora, we gotta look at conspiracy cards. Now that's kind of a hard one, because um, there's not a lot of uh, original cards from Conspiracy. There are some. Can you interest me in free cycling? I saw. I saw there's the commander that gives you free cycling, and she looks very, very fun. Uh, the thing is, I'm trying to see, what do we have here? That is a pure conspiracy card. That is not a conspiracy. Because mm. conspiracy, by its nature, has a lot of uh, used cards, or old cards, I should say. And so it becomes a little difficult to pick a card that also feels like it's from Conspiracy that doesn't have a Conspiracy mechanic on it. I'm willing to accept multiple players as a mechanic. But voting we can't do, dethrone we can't do, monarch we can't do. Uh...
Yeah. So I'm trying to find... Oh, and Draft Matters won't do either. Uh, Arcane Servant? Uh, was that in Conspiracy or was that in Take the Crown? Like, Take the Crown works too. I just haven't... I'm not there yet. Uh... Like, I'm completely fine using Take the Crown. Like, Plated Sea Strider is technically a conspiracy card, but that's 100% a Mirrodin creature. So that won't work. Uh... Hmm. Can't do a parlay card. Just for obvious reasons. If there was a conspiracy card that had, like, just flavor text from Fiora, that would totally work here. Um, there's not really. So I feel we kind of, like, put ourselves into a corner here. Uh, which happens. It happens. Okay, so Conspiracy had basically nothing. Uh, CN2 is Take the Crown's code, I believe. Yep. Um, so we could easily do that. Let's see here. Ballot Broker. Yeah, he votes. So we don't want a voter. That won't help us here. Uh, Borderland Explorer. Now, Borderland Explorer is a maybe. That guy is a definite maybe. Um, Council Guardian. Hmm. Well, I'm not on a page where I can easily look up Council Guardian, but I can be. One second. Again, we're avoiding cards that say, yeah, will the council. We have to avoid that. In fact, I'm starting to think you're just purposely yelling out ones that use those designs to mess with me. Yes, you are. Actually, hold up. Deadly Designs could work uh, I kind of like deadly designs actually maybe deadly designs that one could be fun uh, let's see here okay, we don't want anything that makes you the monarch that won't work Okay, looking for cards originally from it. Yes, that would help. Um, yeah, no goading. Uh, death trap, uh, death reap ritual. Let me check that one. I think I looked at that and went no. Maybe I missed it. That one has Morbid. So, I'm going to avoid that because we don't want Morbid. At least not Morbid that's worded as Morbid. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Working my way through here. Like, obviously, Palace Sentinels would be fun, but we are avoiding the Monarch. Drake Town Forgotten. Let's check that. Drake's Town Forgotten. That's a rare. Um, well, I mean, it could be a rare. I just want something in 
common as well. Uh, Drake's Town Forgotten, actually, would be a really nice Graveyard Matters uh, zombie. Yeah, ooh, I kind of like him. Let me see, what, what, co what common zombie, or what rare zombie slots do we still have? I think all of them. I don't think we have any rare black creatures filled in yet. Mm, we, have a, we need a demon, but we also need a zombie. So, Drake's Town, Forgotten. That's a really neat one, and I really like that one. So that one's going in. Uh, just horribly gruesome looking. So oof. So oof. Uh, creature, Chombi, Zera Zera. I do really like that one. Um, I still want a common for each plane, but to also have a rare for Fiora feels really nice. Uh, even though plus one, plus one counters we didn't say were Black's thing, uh, we're also thinking of moving it away from Blue-Green's thing, so that works out fine. Uh, Deadly Designs is a really good uncommon, but... I'm actually really thinking Borderlands Explorer. Um, so far, he's been the best one we've run into. Uh, I'm going to check the rest of this list real fast. But I am thinking that that might be our winner. Uh, if only because it's an each player card that doesn't care about the Monarch. And nobody really needs to be the Monarch for this. I know everyone likes the Monarch. Nobody needs to be the Monarch. Uh, so yeah, looks like Borderlands Explorer is our Fiora representative. Uh, he's an elf, so that also helps round out our elves. That's good. And it also introduces uh, players to the idea that you can have more than two players. So I am perfectly fine with that. Uh, so let's put in our elf scoot. He he scoots. That's what he does. He's a blade, which is a nice uh, little power toughness combo. It's not as nice as my pikers. I, I just like pikers. Um, Borderlands Explorer. I like him. Borderland Explorer. He doesn't explore all the Borderlands games. Just the one. He only likes the one game. Uh, all right. So we're going to put in Borderland Explorer for Fiora. We're going to skip Ikoria for now. Uh, we need a card from Kaladesh. Uh, so we need Block, KLD, Rarity Common. There are some good options already. Um, personally, I think an Aetherborn fits best here. That's just an immediate way to point out, no, this is a dude from Kaladesh. It does the job. Uh, but that's not to say that that's the only way to do it. But it, it works both ways. Uh, like, I want to avoid energy. Energy wouldn't be great in a core set, because that's a whole new mechanic. But, yeah, no goad. We're done with, we're done with Fiora. We got Fiora done. We have uh, Borderland Marauder. He, he's it. He's our winner. Um, I like Tim. He worked out real well. Lawless Broker. Now, Lawless Broker actually fits with our black uh, aristocrat strategy. So, he is a, a three drop. Which we had a cat in that. We don't need to have a cat in that, but... We had a cat in that. Let, let's put in Lawless Broker. Creature. Uh, Aetherborn Rogue. Because I love the Aetherborn. They're a uh, really cool uh, species. I think they're one of the neatest to come out of magic in a long time. Uh, and this does make you immediately go, well, I don't want that Vampire Noble. I want Lawless Broker. Because he's just straight up better. But you're not always going to get him. You're sometimes going to get that uh, 
that vampire noble instead. And then you're stuck. Uh, four? Yeah. There we go. Uh, in fact, can we make it four and four? That'd be fine. Maybe four and three? Yeah, that looks real good. Okay. There we go. We have our lawless broker. Uh, I think he's perhaps our best option for Kaladesh. And now for a Kamigawa one. Uh, which I want to say it's... I cannot remember Champions of Kamigawa's uh, code. Oh, it's CHK. And if you type in Kamigawa, it knows what you mean. Great. Uh, so nothing with Bushido... The Akis could be fun here. Uh, they give us more goblins, which I'm not against. Hmm. We have Bile Urchin, who is a sacrificing card, uh, which can be fun. We have... Uh, Council of the Soratami, which is just divination. I think divination fits better in that spot. Uh, uh, the weird part is almost everything had Soul Shift or Bushido or Splice. Uh, we don't need any of those. No. Uh, we don't need people going, what's an arcane spell? Uh, now, Frostling is literally the same as that Bile one. Literally the same creature, but in red. Uh, huh. Wicked Akuba. Let's check him. Uh, yeah, no Isamaru. I want our uh, legendaries to be legendaries who are either brand new or haven't had a chance to shine yet. Uh, Wicked Akuba. Ooh. I kind of like Wicked Akuba. He, he is a heck of a hate bear there, isn't he? Uh, that is a heck of a hate bear. So he's a definite maybe. Um, yeah, I do like that. I do like him. Um, hmm. Now, the thing is, there's also the moon folk who could be a lot of fun here. Hmm. We could do both. Uh, so let's look at the common blues first. Do I have room for another weird bear? Hmm. Not really. But I do have room here. So I think Soratami Mirror Guard and Wicked Akuba are the way to go. So let's do Soratami Mirror Guard first, because they're just really neat. And I think having a Moonfolk immediately makes people go, oh, there's there's Kamigawa here. That's neat. Uh, yeah, we're going to put in Soratami guy here. A little Moonfolk wizard. A little 3-1 for... Four, which isn't great, but he has flying, which is nice, and that neat bounce a land mechanic that had no name uh, to do things, which is also neat. And then we have Wicked Akuba, which I keep wanting to say Akuma, which is not what this is. And Akuma is the little butterfly from Miraculous Ladybug.
There we go. He is a spirit. He is 2-2 two, two spirit. And you can just pump him full of mana multiple times to do direct damage. And he, he's very much a Power Rangers villain. And I love him. Uh, yeah, a little martial arts demon. I hate them. I love them. I hate them. I love them. All right. Uh, so yeah, let's get rid of those two, and we're going to put the, um, what, what did we, what's that guy's name? Soratami Mirror Guard. Because we are addressing even the planes that wizards forgot. That's how this works. Uh, next one, we need, is there a way to make it cards that were first printed in Battle Bond? I think there is. First printing. There we go. Common first printings from Battle Bond. Go. So we need a card from Kylum that doesn't reference assist or teams. Uh, I think all of them reference assist or teams. Uh, I mean, there's Jungle Wayfinder, but that's ex he's basically the same as uh, Borderland Patrol. But Saltwater Stalwart, he could work very well here. As could Soaring Showoff. Uh, Aurora Champion I'm specifically uh, ignoring. So the ones I found that I think... There's three I think work really well here. Uh, one is Soaring Showoff. Who, I mean, it's a peacock. That's amazing. It's a peacock. Um, there is Stadium Vendor, which I do like them big-eared goblins. And there's Saltwater Stalwart. Now, Saltwater Stalwart and Soaring Showoff are kind of the way I'm leaning. Uh, Sky Streamer has assist. So they are on no right now. So let me see here. Soaring... Let me check blue. Do I have a three... A two zero or a three zero slot available, uh, or do I have a three and a red slot available in Stadium Vendors? Now, Stadium Vendors is kind of neat because when there's a battlefield, choose a player, that player adds two mana of any one color they choose. That that's a good teaching moment to explain to them that no, you're you're also a you're also a player. You can choose yourself. Uh, I do like him actually. So. Let's do both the, uh, yeah, I want blue to have a higher mana cost matters theme, but, oh, okay, you know what, I think this, I want to do all three, I want to do all three, so we're going to start with the Soaring Show Off, so Soaring Show Off. Uh, he's fun. He's a bird person. We ha haven't had a bird yet. I think a bird's a good way to put this in here. Uh, because my opinion is that a corset should have a large variety of uh, creature types. And I think a bird warrior does that very well. Uh, meanwhile, we also have the Saltwater Stalwart um, and the Stadium Vendors. So Saltwater Stalwart is a 3-2. Or no, he is a 2-4 for, th for 4. He's a Merfolk Warrior. Which was our other Merfolk? Did, did, is he also a Warrior? Have we d only done Merfolk Warriors? Uh, we might need other merfolks uh, later. But I think that's fine. Okay. And I'm going to say Stadium Vendors is our 
this is the Kylum card because I mean it's Kylum. It's out. what card screams Kylum more than Stadium Vendors? Uh, out of the non uh, assist cards, Arena Rector is a mythic. <laughs> And I do like Arena Rector. Uh, Arena Rector actually came up today in a problem I was dealing with. Yeah, I like I like the uh, stadium vendors. They're just little dudes handing out peanuts. Oh, they're potions. They're handing out peanuts. They're the peanut guy, and I love them. They are everything I've ever wanted in a magic card. There we go. All right, Stadium Vendors. Yeah, and Stadium Vendors is going to count as our Kylum uh, representative. Mercadia. We're going to go to Mercadian Masks. Ugh. Nobody wants Mercadian Masks. What is that? MCM? Nope. MRC? M I C K E Y M O U S E? There we go. Uh, do, 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 do. So we have, oh, we wanted auras in green white. And Ancest Ancestral Mask is very much there. That was also in Eternal Masters. It's not on the reserve list. I, mm, that, that one's a very big win for me, like right off the bat. Um, There is also Darting Merfolk, but I don't like Darting Merfolk. Um, no, the fact that uh, Ancestral Mask just immediately made me go like, ooh, this one, this one, this one, I think is the way to go. Uh, I'm not doubting that Arena Rector screams Kylum. Uh, I fully agree that Arena Rector screams Kylum, but I'm looking at commons at the moment. We might go back to her. She's definitely available for later. Uh, but, like, from my point of view, how neat would it be to play a corset and find Ancestral Mask? just it, it's a, one of the weirdly powered cards in this set um so i think that's our mercadian masks one and i'm gonna gonna stop there for uh mercadian masks because like nobody wants to play with mercadian mask cards <laughs> nobody uh the the people who designed mercadian masks don't want to play mercadian masks cards uh and yet here i am looking at more of them to see if there's maybe one more thing. There's a blue card that makes people sacrifice. What? Makes no sense. Uh, so much walk. Like land walk, forest walk, plains walk, etc. Um, there's one that's like it's a 1-1 one, one that if it's blocked, you gain a life. And it's a sign to me of this creature's gonna get blocked. There's a flying dragonfly. There's a wall that's a uh, land war elves, essentially. Uh, there's this weird dude who has unsummon attached to him. Is he the Dalkin or a Merfolk? He's a Merfolk. He is the beefiest Merfolk. Look at this guy and tell me that's not the beefiest Merfolk you've ever seen. I... Hmm. I 
That looks like a djinn, but he's a merfolk. It says so on his gatherer text. Mm. Mm -hmm 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 -hmm. Mm -mm 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 that that whole thing makes me uncomfortable. So I'm gonna put a star, 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 maybe on a card here and put waterfront bouncer and adding him because like, I think that's how we're gonna handle putting in our maybes is star, 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 maybe. I guess it could just be star, maybe. We don't need the three stars. But I mean, cause I would like there to be more merfolk. I was just literally saying how there's not enough merfolk. This dude needs new art if we pick him. Because we don't need the roided out merman. Like, oh my goodness. Don't Don't use pufferfish steroids, kids. Don't don't use it. Ooh, we need a homerid. There is a mill strategy. We actually might need a homerid. Um but Homerids are Dominaria. So let's get through the list first. Uh, New Phyrexia. Time to go to New Phyrexia. All right, so we're going to go block some common New Phyrexian cards. Alpha Tyranax is right there at the beginning. Uh, I'm actually going to go all the way to the end and start from the other side this time. Let's see what I got. Uh, hmm, 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 hmm. Withstand death, eh. Wing puncture, eh. White Sun's Passage, nope. Uh, we do not need an instant speed chaplain's blessing. Hard pass. Uh, so let's see here. Vivisection would be nice, but Vivisection requires sacrificing. I want to keep that out of blue. Because uh, otherwise we're starting to muddy up things a bit too much. Um. Hmm. Of course, nothing with Phyrexian mana. Nobody needs that. Uh... Now there's Vapor Snag. Vapor Snag is like a slightly better unsummon. Um, hmm. I don't want anything with Infect. I don't want anything with. There's that Alpha Tyranax. He is good. Uh, Bladed Sentinel could be fun. Blister Stick Shaman's from here. That's correct. I do like Blister Stick Shaman. Not you, Gytaxian Probe. You know what you did. Uh, mm. Blister Stick Shaman's fun. Uh, I'm not denying him. Hmm. Ooh. Caustic Hound. Caustic Hound is a very nice sack uh, target. Uh, mm. I wanted a cycler in that slot, though. So I guess I could just do another maybe, but I can't do that with everything. Oh, however, what I could do is use a artifact for new Phyrexia. That might be a very good point. Uh is picking a Phyrexian artifact, uh, like an equipment, and using that. That might be the way to go. Hmm. Or there's Bliss's Scorn. 
but that's more just generally useful in an artifact set, which this is not. This is a core set. Uh, Gremlin Mine looks neat. It only affects artifact creatures. There is Hexplate Golem. There is Hexplate Golem. We have that big golem already. Hmm. Hovermere. I think Hovermere might be our winner. I know you want Flare Husk, and I love Flare Husk, and that's why he's in my cube, but I think Hovermere is the way to go here. Then we have a mirror, and mirrors are kind of nice to have. One, two, flying, vigilance for two. Give him a save. He's an equipment. He's a germ. I know, and I know you like the germs. But I don't think that's the best one to look at right now, bud. Uh, that's, we won't find germs anywhere else. That is a good point. Mm. That is tempting to bring up. Not going to deny that. Hmm. Oh, you know who else we're going to add, though? Just because they are also a good choice. Uh, is this fella the Mir Sire? I think a couple of mirrors are the way to go here. Uh, as opposed to the Splicers who all uh, were in uh, Core 2020. Not all of them, but a good chunk of the Splicers were in Core 2020. I think having some mirrors might be a great idea here. And a mirror Sire works really well in both a token deck and a sacrifice deck. Uh, so I think he could be a lot of fun. Uh, hmm. Yeah, and I think Blister Six Shaman kind of rounded out a little bit. Nothing wrong with Blister Six Shaman. And then I'm going to make a maybe slot for a uh, cost account. Because I do like there being a hound or two in a set. So Blister Stick Shaman, he's always fun, honestly. Yeah, this guy can be a lot of fun here. And then let's make a... Uh, yeah, let's put Blister Stick Shaman in the window so you all can see him. See? Perfect. And then cost account here. It's going to be another star, maybe. Maybe. Creature. Hound. Where is my hounds? I think this would be our first hound. He's a 4-4. When he dies, each player loses 4 life. He's a good late game mana sink. And I mean he's basically a horrible dog monster filled with um filled with mustard gas. So why wouldn't you want him? Mirin spy. Mirin Spy. Well, let's check Mirren Spy. Because that sounds pretty fun, actually. Uh 
Uh-huh. You know what? There is kind of like a slight... Um, artifact thing going on here. In common. And I kind of like... Or in blue. And I kind of like it. Um, we don't quite have a slot for Mirren Spy, though. Um, then again... Let's go by our uh, CCs. You, you. I guess I don't need two single blue mana creatures if we're trying to make blue a slower color. So yeah, let's do Mirror and Spy. Uh, now it's a drone. Is that still its creature type? It's still a drone. That's weird. I, I don't know how many drones there are in Magic. That doesn't seem like it's a very big number. Uh, in fact, I want to find out how many drones there are in Magic. I have a feeling there's like two, and that's one of them. Creature type drone. How many drones? Oh, we have a couple drones, actually. A lot of them are Eldrazi. Okay, so we have Advanced Hover Guard from Mirrodin. We have a bunch of Eldrazi. Hover Guard Observer. Hover Guard Sweepers. Looming Hover Guard. Mirrodin Spy, naturally. Um. Somber hover guard. It looks like most of the drones here that aren't Eldrazi are from Mirrodin and not from uh, the second one. Yes. Wrap it up. Oh. Great streaming. He warms up the room a little bit too much. Uh, so we're going to end this very soon here. Um... Ooh, that Wander Guard Sentry is fun too, though. Do I have a slot for him? I might. I might have a slot for him later. Uh, so, we're going to make another maybe. Real fast. Uh, another maybe. There's a lot of good blue maybes. I'm going to let it load in. And there was another one that I saw. There was a Viscerid drone. Uh, that one cares about snow, so we're not going to do that. Uh, and then there was Training Drone, but he cares about equipment, so we're not going to do that. I think that'll be it for today. Uh, so, of course, if you like all this, you're watching on YouTube in the future, like, comment, subscribe, you know, that whole jazz. Uh, and then if you are... Uh, watching here on Twitch. Uh, subs and bits always matter. We always appreciate them. And everything we are doing is brought to you by you through Patreon and Twitch and all those things. Uh, we will be back to do this at another time. I don't know when another time is, but we will do it at another time. And uh, probably tomorrow. Probably tomorrow we'll do another hour or two trying to not fill in more gaps. Because we are made some very good progress filling in uh, cards from other planes. Anyway, thank you. I hope you all have a great evening.